This is a really fun event. It's our um, kind of pinnacle of events here at St. Thomas. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking your seats. And my name is Nancy Peterson. I'm a 1985 grad with an accounting degree. And I also earned my executive MBA in 2005. I own a local company called Display Sales. And I'm very proud to say I have four Tommies on my staff. And I'm also a Tommy parent. My son, Thomas Peterson, is a graduate from the class of 2018, and he is here this evening. And I serve as the Alumni Board President. I'm, it's my privilege to serve you as Master of Ceremonies this evening, and welcome again to the annual St. Thomas Day celebration. We are here this evening to celebrate our patron saint and to honor five remarkable Tommies who have excelled in their professions, in their communities, and in our classrooms. We are eager to share their stories with you. And to our five award recipients, congratulations. You serve this university and the larger community with distinction, and you richly deserve your honors. Each of you reminds us of the powerful way in which we can impact the lives of others. You spark the inspiration in us to work toward the common good through our time, talents, and treasures. I know several former St. Thomas Day Award recipients are here this evening. Would you please stand and be recognized? <clears throat> I also want to acknowledge current and former members of our Board of Trustees the members of governing and advisory, board, advisory boards of our school and colleges, and fellow members of our alumni advisory board. Will you all please stand and be recognized? I want to recognize the six new members of our Society of the Arches at its highest level. Socius Fidel Isimus, for 10 years of dedicated service to St. Thomas. Society of the Arches was developed by the Alumni Association Board of Directors to formally acknowledge and recognize the contributions of alumni volunteers to the university community. Alumni at this level have shown ultimate loyalty and support to their alma mater, and their leadership has been honorable. This level is achieved after 20 semesters of volunteer activity. There are a couple of these new members here this evening. Thank you again for your dedication and service. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Julie Sullivan, who is concluding her sixth year as president of the University of St. Thomas. Please join me in welcoming President Sullivan. Thank you, Nancy, and good evening to everyone. I join in welcoming you to this St. Thomas Day celebration, and I am humbled and honored to have the opportunity to gather with our award winners this evening and their families, as well as trustees, alumni, faculty, staff, students, and friends of St. Thomas. This is a tradition, and it's a tradition that we're very grateful for. It's so wonderful as we look around this room Look around this room. I see so many people who have given generously to so many and have made an extraordinary impact on their communities and to this university. And so while we know how special these, award, these awards are, and we know that each year we can only give them to a select few, we also know how large and generous every Tommy Hart is. And it's that large and generous Tommy Hart and spirit that we celebrate every year. Tonight we are honoring three truly remarkable alumni, a well-respected faculty member, and an outstanding student. We will witness their stories of selfless service to others and extraordinary engagement in the life of this university. And we will be inspired 
because that is what St. Thomas Day is all about. As we honor our patron saint and celebrate the achievements of exceptional members of the Tommy Network, we will be inspired and uplifted in our own work by their role models. So it is now my honor to introduce Father Larry Snyder, Vice President of Mission, to offer an invocation before our dinner. Good evening. As Dr. Sullivan said, we come together this evening to celebrate the accomplishments, the commitment, the giftedness, and the generosity of several outstanding individuals and their connection to the University of St. Thomas. As we do so, we ask God's blessing upon them. We also begin this evening by thanking God for the many ways that God nourishes and blesses us all each and every day. And in that spirit, we pray together, bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. bon appetito. Good evening again, everyone. It's time to begin the awards program. We have five awards to present this evening. We will tell their stories through videos about the award winners, and then they'll come to the stage to receive the award from President Sullivan. The first award is the Monsignor James Lavin Award, which honors an alumnus or alumna for outstanding volunteer contributions to St. Thomas. For the countless people that knew Doug Hennis, he was the quintessential Tommy. <laughs> he was a champion of the university as a student and as an alumnus and for 27 years as a staff member. He exemplified his university's values. Doug passed away last July 19th at the age of 63. And we're grateful for the opportunity to honor Doug posthumously. Doug's tribute was created by Greg Vandergrift, St. Thomas journalism professor, and Brad Jacobson, a 1986 alumnus who was involved in producing all of the videos that will be shown this evening. <laughs> St. Thomas's spirit echoes across campus on game nights. Good evening, basketball fans, and welcome to Stanford's Court. Let's go, Michael. The faithful reconnect. Nice to see you. Jim Deutsch greets Gabby and Anna Ware, basketball fans through family. Their grandfather, Doug Hennis, and I have been very good friends for a lot of years, and he's been bringing the girls to the games from the beginning. It's just weird, like, coming here. Without, like, without him being here. Doug Hennis sat in these seats. Typically over there. But this spirit of St. Thomas is noticeably missing, leaving us too soon last summer. The whole reason we're even having this conversation is because of the things Doug has done here at St. Thomas. Every time we play, I get somebody that stops by and says, you know, it's just very different without Doug around. Steve Fritz, as an admissions counselor, first met the kid from Owatonna in the early 70s. His nickname in high school was Doc, and I gotta presume it, a lot of it was because he knew a little bit about everything. Hennis's journey of doing everything began as a writer and editor at the Aquan, which from St. Thomas led to a 14-year stint with the Pioneer Press. He was a, first a reporter and well-respected, but then he really made his name as the Metro editor. And Hennis's name got bigger with his hand in two Pulitzers. He was interested in, in helping people get the best stories and writing them in the best way possible. But that St. Thomas spirit drew Hennis home in 1990 to a dream job, starting as executive director of university relations. He did things that were well outside of what he needed to do and they were all to make St. Thomas better. Hennis's behind the scenes fingerprints are everywhere. Perhaps no one can count the programs he touched. For instance, 360 journalism. 
I'm a little embarrassed to say I know he was working all these back channels. He didn't feel like I needed to know that. I just knew he was out there doing it. The Fry Science and Engineering Center exists because Hennis secured $15 million from the federal government. I worked for Senator Wellstone for a couple years after I left journalism and, and who should show up in our office lobbying on behalf of a building at the University of St. Thomas but Doug Hennis. He'd go after a project like a terrier with a bone. Hennis also joined Father Dennis Deese on his travels to Cuba and Uganda, about writing about both. He was also part oh, of the president's staff. Uh, St. Thomas uh, would be less than it is today if Doug Hennis had not come along. Certainly not the campus as it is today. Doug was the face of St. Thomas in the neighborhood. In the end, his patience and uh, unflappability made it possible for St. Thomas to expand to meet its needs. Telling the story of what St. Thomas has become falls to university writers like Jordan Osterman, who learned from the master. He was very willing at times to, to talk about his, his previous career, but not in any kind of way that made you feel like you were short because you didn't have 17 years of Pulitzer Prize winning experience at the Pioneer Press. <laughs> Hennis's countless writings, from sports to the St. Thomas Magazine, are a legacy of his spirit. He was, in my mind, and the embodiment of what a Tommy is. He was it. Yes, that spirit of St. Thomas to which Anna and Gabby had a front row seat. Asking him for money for the concession stand. He'd get really mad because he said, it's not about the candy, it's about the game. And now it's about Hennis as recipient of the Monsignor James Lavin Award. It was actually Doug's idea. The Monsignor James Lavin Award really is meant to represent someone who uh, does service to the Alumni Association and, and to the university. Who could be more deserving? He was so special, man, a man, I'll tell you. His blood was purple not red. It was all so wrapped together, you didn't really get a sense of where Doug ended and St. Thomas began. Commitment, such commitment. But he was a cigar buddy to me. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Monsignor James Lavin Award recipient, Doug Hennis. is Anna, Gabby, Karen. We're gonna miss Doug. The inscription on his award reads, for 41 years as an alumnus and 27 years as a staff member, Doug combined his passion for St. Thomas, his love of writing, and his innate desire to connect with and help people he led his alma mater's university relations department and served as a liaison to government, neighborhood, and various higher education groups. Through magazine articles, presidential addresses, and other writing, Doug expressed the mind and the heart of the university to fellow alumni and numerous other audiences. His notable dedication to Tommy Sports took him around Minnesota and nationwide at playoff time to cheer as a fan and to cover competition as a newsman in recognition of Doug's extraordinary participation in the life of the University of St. Thomas alumni family, 
we salute him and confer upon him the Monsignor James Lavin Award, May 1st, 2019. Our next award, Professor of the Year, recognizes excellence in teaching, scholarship, and service. The faculty selects the recipient, and this year's Professor of the Year is Dr. Victoria Young. <laughs> Professor and Chair of the St. Thomas Art History Program and Architectural Historian. Jordan Osterman, a 2011 alumnus, tells us more about Victoria. Simple lines forever show an architecture project's start and history. What do you think sketching does for your brain? And to see how this campus has evolved through time has been really eye-opening. But pictures and drawings are far from the heart of what Professor of the Year Victoria Young brings to her teaching. You start to understand the proportional relationships of the object in a way you don't just by looking. The role of the human in building, and it's everything, right? That's just a lot of people who believe in a common purpose of putting up something that matters. Seeing how passionate she is about her work, and it makes me want to find something and pursue something that I'm as passionate about. Young's blueprint features prominently her dedication to students. She's so focused on the students' needs and bringing everything to a personal level. First draft was great, and you're writing with some humor and with it. Okay. I haven't seen from you ever, and I love it, I love For it. For those students who dive more fully into Young's world of art history, the experiences are life-changing. Forever grateful for the experience that she's given me and kind of welcomed me into this art history family. That's the golden ticket. When a student has become something different because they've spent time with you, it makes me different because I've spent time with them. And that's, it's great. Young has helped open the doors of art history, <laughs> turning the entire campus and community into a classroom. Let's use our art, let's use our buildings. Let's make sure kids leave this place understanding what it's all about. Just to be able to see how art goes so much farther beyond the classroom, it's given me just a completely different outlook on the world. I think it'd be a great idea if we can get this 360 camera. Young's goal, appreciating what every person brings to life. She is thinking about how we can make connections with other departments, other disciplines. And what does the shield do during battle? Oh. She builds relationships, and that is key for kind of vision of curriculum that's, mo that's not so siloed, that's about integrating across disciplines. Uh, literally, we're hours away. April 1st, Monday, you'll start seeing um, fences placed. For years, Young has been a critical member of forming the campus master plan. This project is significant, so anything we can do to protect and preserve that legacy. That includes the Iverson Center for Faith and the Chapel of St. Thomas Aquinas. She takes the time out of her day to be part of the process, and not just from a spectator standpoint, but to be engaged, to be driving towards the solution. It's exciting to see big things happen, the next big thing on the horizon as something that, that she can make happen. A respected author, Young is also soon to be the president of the International Society of Architectural Historians. Frank Gehry's visit in 2011 well, I'm having a little moment right you now, too? Yeah. is one of many times Young has helped bring architecture's biggest names to St. Thomas. If I have to think about a few defining moments of the past 20 years, spending time with Frank Gehry inside the Winton Guesthouse was probably one of the most important things that's happened to me. It was the greatest thing. It was the greatest thing. In classical design, that podium... For many, Actually matters. Their own greatest thing moments have involved Young. It's such an honor to learn from someone who is so intelligent and so involved and so passionate about what she does. I can't thank her enough for the stuff she's done for me. I think Professor of the Year should go to someone who is making the institution better, and she does that in every aspect of what she's doing. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Professor of the Year, Victoria Young. St. Thomas is very lucky to have you here. The award inscription is from Journey Toward Fulfillment, the centennial history of St. Thomas, and reads as follows. Dr. Victoria Young, as one recalls the faces, the voices, and the classroom practices of outstanding teachers of years long gone, one is likely to be struck by the very great diversity among them. Yet each was an extraordinarily influential teacher. The University of St. Thomas proudly presents its Professor of the Year Award to Dr. Victoria Young. St. Thomas Day, May 1st, 2019. Congratulations. Our third award is the Humanitarian Award, which recognizes an individual's contributions to the betterment of the spiritual and material welfare of the less fortunate. This year's recipient is Beth Burns, a 1994 alumna. Let's learn more about Beth from writer Paul David and narrator Vanita Sakar. As the sun rises, on the corner of Northwest 6th Avenue and Flanders Street in downtown Portland, Oregon, the doors open to comfort, friendship, and support. When a young person walks in the door, first and foremost, the most important thing to us is that they feel loved. A refuge for homeless teens and young adults. I want young people who come through pair to feel like they have the space to dream and to hope and to create new narratives about who they are. Welcome to Thursday at PEAR. PEAR, it stands for Project Education Art Recreation. What brings you here? What we're here to do is to give compassion and love and embrace them where they're at. Nearly two decades ago, three friends had a vision to work with homeless youth by building strong, trusting relationships with them. The idea was to eventually serve at least 25 young people per day. Within the first nine months, we were seeing 60 kids a day, and it really hasn't let off. One of the things that my, the young people at Pair, they are incredibly alienated and isolated from the community, and I know that when they come in Pair, they feel seen. Beth Burns graduated from St. Thomas in 1994 with a degree in English literature. So my dream was to be a high school English teacher. She was quickly drawn to working with homeless youth. I really feel like it was at St. Thomas where I started to understand that who we are in the world is really more important than what we do. She doesn't mess around. <laughs> I think what Beth has created a space for in the city of Portland has changed the entire dynamic of the way people do social work. It's become more personable. It's about mentoring. It's about connecting with people. What we've built is a custom mentorship program for each individual young person. This really isn't innovative in a lot of ways. It's just rare to work with young people as though they're young people. That's probably good. And then we'll just smear it around. Pear provides multiple job training and life skills classes. This is how people brew coffee even today in Guatemala arts programs, and outdoor adventures. I love watching people create. I love watching people laugh. I love watching people who haven't felt very loved throughout their lives really have a deep, genuine belief that they are loved. We'll look up here. For us, being able to help them see themselves outside of themselves 
for how the rest of the world tends to see them. And that's what's telling you right here, like what? They give me like encouragement and also remind me myself that I can do stuff that I don't, you know, like I don't normally think I can do. They remind you you're not alone, you have somebody that gives a fuck about you, somebody that will actually say, hey, how you doing, you know, make sure you're all right. If you're out here and you're sleeping on the streets and you're 16 years old and you have a bad day, where are you gonna go? You're gonna come to Pear and we're gonna be here and that's gonna be our job and that's, that's why we're here every day. It can be intimidating. There's times where I wanna shy away from it. It's taught me the courage to like show up and meet the world with all of my flaws and all of my beauties. The greatest gift Beth has given me is the ability to not have to worry about being myself. We need someone to lead like Beth. We, we need it. Beth has one of the deepest, most compassionate hearts of anyone I've ever met. I do this work because I love working with young people and I love who I get to be in the world. When we stand with people on the margins, we regain some of our own humanity. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 University of St. Thomas Humanitarian Award recipient, Beth Burns. Beth, thank you for sharing your heart and your life with the youth in your community. You make an impact. The inscription on Beth's award reads, Elizabeth Burns, 94. Since 2002, your nonprofit organization, PEAR, has offered life-changing services to Portland, Oregon's homeless youth through programs in education, arts, and recreation. As co-founder and executive director, you bring dignity, hope, and a positive vision for the future to more than 50 young people a day, almost 5,000 over the course of PEAR's existence. Provided with daily food, mentoring, and job training programs, those who need and use these opportunities feel connected to a supported community. With your help, they lay foundations for successful adult lives and realize that generosity and caring can heal even deep wounds. You have begun a cycle of love that will continue. In recognition of your inspiring and selfless service to others, the University of St. Thomas commends you and confers upon you its humanitarian award, St. Thomas Day, May 1st, 2019. Our next award is the Tommy Award. It is sponsored annually by the Division of Student Affairs and honors a senior selected by students, faculty, and staff as best representing St. Thomas Aquinas' ideals of scholarship, leadership, and campus involvement. This year's Tommy Award winner is Bizrat Bayou. Bizrat is a senior majoring in neuroscience and minoring in public health. He has been involved as a student leader at St. Thomas in a variety of ways, including serving as the undergraduate student government president, as a student diversity and inclusion services linkages mentor, and a member of the Black Empowerment Student Alliance, African Nations Student Association, and Summit Singers. Senior Jacob Charbonneau offers this profile of Bizrat. Much like fashion and its eye for progress, Bizrat Bayou represents change for St. Thomas with his fresh perspectives. The Reaching Excellence in Academics and Leadership program first brought Bayou to St. Thomas. I knew the school was, you know, it wasn't too big, it wasn't too small, it was like just the right size. And for me, the real program really put it over the edge. When Bayou arrived, others took notice. He's a genuine person who really just cares about 
other people, cares about the success of his peers. Uh, he works really hard. He's very dedicated. Knees, knees, Bayou's dedication has brought a new kind of harmony. Somebody. With Summer Singers and with Cadenza, we've had opportunities to like speak our voice and do stuff on campus and express ourselves through music. That voice can be heard as an RA, as a former board member of the Black Empowerment Student Alliance, Call to order. And as president of the student government. So I'll move it to Vivi and Malcolm um, to introduce this to the general council. A position that is put to test his leadership skills. It's not easy being a student of color in a predominantly white institution. In the fall of 2018, it was time for change. Bayou helped lead a sit-in to deal with racial issues on campus. It, it really came out of just being tired and all of a sudden we had this platform to really do something with, with this. And, and so immediately what we did is we had to make our university uncomfortable. It wasn't just, I want to make you uncomfortable. It was, we're going to get to work. He wasn't just protesting, but he was also figuring out a way to be really productive and saying, what are the things that need to happen next? The university has created an action plan to combat racism. Bayou is part of an oversight group. His voice matters and his ability to work with all kinds of different people really matters too. One, two, three. An early result, the new Intercultural Center. Use this space to heal. Use it as a space to, to dismantle systemic oppression. Use it as a space to be greater as a, as a community. So he started something Thank you. that will continue at St. Thomas and make us better. Say my name, say my name. A better community for students like Bayou's younger sister, Ledette. He takes the time to like actually care about everything he's doing along the way, and I really appreciate that. This first-generation American is a change maker. My parents didn't speak English when they came here. Who also excels in class. I was like an ESL. Studying neuroscience and public health and hoping to use those skills in his family's homeland, Ethiopia. Like, we go to church, it's all American. I knew Ethiopia was lacking in terms of like their health aid. And I know in the long run, I definitely want to go back and help, particularly like rural areas. Bayou wants to be an agent of change, just like he is for St. Thomas. Stand up and say it loud if you're out there. If anybody's a Tommy, like it's this guy, he really cares about the community. And even though he's leaving, he just puts in 100%. We can be heroes. He stands out as somebody who consistently delivers in what the mission of the university intends for. We're the generation. We can't afford to wait. The future started yesterday. And we're already late. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Tommy Award recipient, Bizrop Bayou. We're excited to see what happens after you graduate and how you impact the world. Your inscription on your award reads, Bizrat M. Bayou, 19, the senior selected by students, faculty, and staff who has displayed exceptional scholarship, leadership, and campus involvement. The University of St. Thomas proudly presents its Tommy Award, St. Thomas Day, May 1st, 2019. Our final award is the Distinguished Alumnus Award, which honors an individual for leadership and service to St. Thomas, the community, and in his or her field of endeavor. The recipient of this year's award is Cardinal 
Blaise Supich, a 1971 alumnus who combines critical thinking with a pastoral approach. Paul David and Vanita Sakar share Cardinal Supich's story with us. He took bread and giving thanks broke it. Taking bread and taking wine and saying this is his body and blood, do this in memory of me. I see this as a challenge to all of us who are receiving. To do that in memory of him means that we're really ready to give our lives for each other. For Cardinal Blaise Supich, those words translate into action. Cardinal Supich's ability to guide the church rests on his relationships with people. Making clear that the commitment of thousands of people from all backgrounds. I realize that uh, my job is to, almost like an orchestra leader, to get people to work together in a harmonious way uh, for the good of the church. It's not about me. Uh, it's about how we work together in a collaborative way. Named by Pope Francis as the ninth Archbishop of Chicago in November of 2014, Cardinal Supich says he stays grounded thanks to his family. A holy man of integrity. And I think being raised in a large family and still having your brothers and sisters around to keep track of you is, is what helps. Supich grew up in Nebraska with three brothers and five sisters. My brothers and sisters have always been very leveling to me. In fact, when I came here to Chicago, uh, one of my sisters seeing the newspapers filled with my name and the television stations at night covering the installation uh, said to me, she said, you know, I really don't get it. You are not that interesting. <laughs> A special honor for Archbishop Blaise Supich at the Vatican today. See Media in the nation's third largest archdiocese definitely takes an interest. From the very beginning, there was a strong sense that he wanted to reach out beyond the Catholic community, that coming here as Archbishop, he really understood his ministry to the whole city. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. In Chicago, we have real challenges, I mean, in the life of the city, and he's attuned to that. Last year on Good Friday, Cardinal Supich walked side by side through one of Chicago's most troubled neighborhoods with faith leaders from across the city. From the depths of our despair, help us when we are weak. You know, there are very few voices that have moral authority and can offer a spiritual direction. Amen. Amen. An enlightening vision of who we are as people and where we ought to be moving towards. Work that I give probably more time to than anything else is being able to make sure that I can articulate the faith to people, what we understand as ourself through my preaching, teaching, public speaking. As he leads the 2.2 million Catholics in the Chicago area, Cardinal Supich credits St. Thomas with providing a solid foundation. He attended St. John Vianney and graduated in 1971 with a philosophy degree. I'm proud to be able to say that I'm an alum. I, I really do find that it was a real game changer for me to go to the University of St. Thomas. I was really grateful to have as the rector of the seminary at that time, Archbishop John Roach. He uh, was an individual who was bigger than life in many ways and, and had so many qualities of leadership. I really found myself taking the next step in life that I think otherwise may not have happened. He's always challenging the community to take it to another, another level, but always in the name of the Lord Jesus. Three words commonly used to describe Cardinal Supich, humble, grateful, and inclusive. He's helped me out in a number of situations. He has written the foreword to my book, and he also, best of all, introduced me to Pope Francis. He kind of pulled her aside and had a nice conversation with her. He's in a position of significant leadership uh, in the American church, but in the universal church as well. I stand ready. In spite of his, you know, international presence, he's a guy from Omaha. He believes greatly in God's providence and putting him in the places where he needs to be. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your 2019 distinguished alumnus, Cardinal Blaise Supich.
Cardinal Supic, your sister may not think you're important or a big deal, but we all do. So <laughs> thank you for your service and your leadership. Your award inscription reads as follows. Cardinal Blaise J. Supic, 71. Ordained a priest in 1975, you were ordained a bishop in 1998, and have served the, dio the Diocese of Rapid City, South Dakota, Spokane, Washington, and Chicago, Illinois. In the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, you have served and led many committees, and have held board and advising roles for other prominent organizations, including chairman of the National Catholic Education Association. At the consistory of November 19th, 2016, Pope Francis elevated you to the College of Cardinals at the Basilica of St. Peter in Vatican City. In recognition of your extraordinary devotion to the church and its mission and your love, compassion, and tireless work for all of God's children, the University of St. Thomas salutes you and confers upon you its Distinguished Alumnus Award St. Thomas Day, May 1st, 2019. Wasn't that inspiring? I told you it would be inspiring. <laughs> you know, um, we all tried to do best we can uh, to listen to God and try to fulfill his will every day and try to care and love for others. But when you see the extraordinary things that the people that we witness tonight do, it gives you new energy, new hope, and new inspiration. So this is a wonderful evening to be able to celebrate that. I also want to give a, a special thanks to uh, Doug's wife, Karen, for uh, sharing this moment with us. And so many of Doug's colleagues are here tonight. And it, it was really important for them, along with Doug's family, to be able to affectionately remember and honor him. Uh, I am told that they still often sit in their offices and talk about things and say, now what would Doug do? And so I know it's sometimes difficult, but thank you, Karen, and thank you, Doug's family, for letting us celebrate him tonight. So I also, let's give him a round of applause. And of course, we don't have an event like this without a lot of work from a lot of people. So I would like to thank our staff in development and alumni relations, our staff in the marketing insights and communications group, our catering staff, our campus ministry, uh, ITS, information technology services, and event support for their contribution to this evening's celebration. Finally, I'm supposed to remind you that if you parked in the Anderson parking facility on the South Campus, we have a ticket you can pick up on your way out, and if you show it to the person as you're leaving the parking facility, you'll be able to leave, and there's somebody in the back holding them up. Uh, the last thing I'm supposed to say is remind our award winners to gather up here in a few moments for a group photo, and this concludes our event. Thank you again for being with us for this extraordinary celebration. <laughs>